Hello everybody! How are you today? Oh my goodness. Let me turn my feedback thing down. I hope y'all are doing great today. Hello Dawn and Ann, Louise, Jan, Andy, Ann. I'm so excited to have you all here. Oh my gosh, it's just, it's been one of those hectic mornings. We took my husband's truck in and uh, then we removed a shower door. I edited a video. <laughs> we're getting stuff pinned down because we're supposed to have storms tonight. Rain's supposed to come in about four o'clock, so we're gonna go vote when I get done with my live today because we didn't get that done this morning. So it's been one of those days. I had just been puffy all morning. When I woke up, I was just so puffy. I'm like, oh, I can feel the weather. Even my hair, look, it's all puffy. It needs cut really bad, so I'm, I'm waiting before, right before we go on vacation to cut it, but right now it's just like a poofy mess. So, but it's really nice out there right now. It was a beautiful morning, and I had coffee on the deck this morning and lunch on the deck, <laughs> so oh, I'm not looking forward to these storms at all, so that's going to storm where you're at in Indiana, Don, yeah. It's, uh, it's just going to be one of those crazy days. Hello, Pam. Um, yeah, so it's, I've, I've got one of those sinus headaches in my head, so I, I really hope this, <laughs> this life goes well today, because <laughs> I've been all over the place today, all over the place, so I, my mind is not very focused, so I could be all over the place in this painting, so I did make myself some notes on <laughs> how I want it to go, but oh goodness gracious, you guys. It's just been one of those days, and uh, yeah. So I'm going to put me up in the corner here. <laughs> I'm going to show you how I did the background first. Uh, it's another little bit of different technique, so I, I want to give you, you know, all the information you can, because if you want to go out and paint on your own, and you like that technique that I've showed you, you can take that technique and incorporate it into any painting that you do. Um, I do like painting on solid color backgrounds as well, but I think backgrounds like this, just a little more interesting. So we're painting this cute little duck today. I hope you guys all got your line drawing. It had both of these guys in the little packet, so I think it was $4 for, for it, both pictures, both line drawings the list of paints and the prep instructions. So um, I got mine partially prepped, so I'm going to be finishing the prep work with you guys. I'm telling you, I was all over the place this morning. So yeah, we're gonna paint this guy right here. So I'm gonna set him up here so I can see him. And this is just a bonus for you guys. There's no video. <laughs> You're just gonna have to figure him out because I, man, I really struggled with this guy. He was, he was a tough one for me, that's for sure. I think he turned out super cute, but he was kind of tough. So, all right, we are gonna get started showing you how to do the background. Now, I have applied blue mist on my background here with my damp roller. I've got my roller here. It's been sitting in water because we're gonna do the kind of that slip slap technique to start with, and then we're gonna add some other technique on top of that. So I'm going to wring out the excess paint. Grab my palette. I did not make myself any notes whatsoever on how I did this background. <laughs> so it may not even turn out. Oh goodness. I'm telling you. I would just, I'm out of it. Seriously. I just feel all this pressure in my head. And whew. All right. So Williamsburg Blue is the other color I'm going to use on my background. As you can tell, 
see they're, <laughs> they're not quite the same color you can just slightly see that green in the background um, we do want to see some of it we'll bring some of it forward with our technique um, that we're gonna do so I'm gonna put both these out hopefully I won't get my roller into that one yet I'm gonna just fill my roller with this this one because I need this color in my roller let me move my prep piece out of the way I don't want to get stuff all over it and I'm going to dampen this a little bit with this color see I'm gonna have to put a little bit more out because I want to do that slip slap on here so I have to have both both colors on my roller but I don't want to overwork it into my roller I still want to see both colors so I'm gonna pick up a little bit of that blue in just a couple of places so right there and right there it's not very much blue <laughs> I'm gonna work that in I'm gonna get a little bit more and work it in to my roller just a little bit and again we're gonna do that slip slapping I generally stand up when I do this <laughs> um, it's a little bit easier I think you can see you can get the perspective when you stand up and do this um, so just work it in kind of like we did the one from last week, uh, the um, daffodil. We did do the daffodil last week, right? <laughs> no, we did spring bag. Okay, two weeks ago. <laughs> oh my goodness. So we're just kind of giving it a modeled look in the background. Just kind of working it in. Again, I'm just using a piece of cereal box cardboard type stuff I don't know where it came from but it's pretty thin I save I even save all the the backings to my palette paper I use those for practicing on and teaching on and demoing on and you know you've got it and if you don't like it you can paint over it throw it in the recycle bin whatever okay so I would like a little bit more blue on there, but I'm just going to go with it like that, just so we can move on. Okay, so I'm going to, I'm done with this guy. I'm going to drop him down into the water so that he doesn't, the paint doesn't dry. I'm going to set him aside. Get him out of the way. Okay, so my paint is still kind of damp. It's not incredibly wet. Um, so you want to let it dry slightly. And I'm putting rubbing alcohol in my little cup here. And I'm just going to take, I've got a rake brush here just because it splatters off of it a little bit easier. And I'm going to splatter on here. Now the more wet that your paint is, and I'll show you on another piece, the more wet your paint is, uh, there is a huge difference in how this effect goes into the background. So I'm going to show you this one where the paint is almost completely dry. And then I will do it on another piece that will show you if you have lots of wet paint on there, how it will look. Okay, I'm going to grab a baby wipe. Hello, Dale. Rainy Minnesota. And I'm just going to dab at this a little bit. It's, it's really hard to see until it dries, but it creates a almost shadow type effect. Let me see if I can bring my original one in here and show you. So these areas right here, kind of almost like they're shadow areas, you know, or I don't know. I just think it's super, super cool. So you'll do that before your paint dries. I think my paint might have been just a tad bit too dry, but it's getting a little bit of the effect on there. Okay. Then you're going to take some water and we're going to Batter some water on here again you have to do this before your paint is dry completely you don't want it wet wet for this technique but you do need it wet you know it needs to be not dry by making myself clear <laughs> I feel like I am just confusion y'all so I've got that wet water on there so now I'm going to take my my paper towel and I'm going to start lifting. Let me zoom in see if that will help you see it a little bit better. It's going to start lifting the paint. You know how you drop a, a drop of water when you're painting? I did it on my daffodil and it's it started lifting the paint right away. That's what this does. It lifts the paint and creates that just fun little little bit of 
something going on in the background like was that intentional or did she you know was that an accident she'd know it was like that so it's kind of hard to see when it's wet there you're starting to see some of the lighter stuff where I had the water okay so between the alcohol and the water you get this really cool cool background so hopefully that was enough information um, on my rabbit though I pushed harder when I was removing water and so it went through more layers it went through all the layers down to the white not completely white because I still see a little tint of green in there so it removed more paint on this one when I did it on this one so and I kind of like that when I got done so I left it uh, I didn't paint over it so um, you know the, the more you push on it and dab keep dabbing at it the more paint you can lift the wetter it is the more you can lift as well so the wetter the paint is so you get just that fun little little uh, background effect I think it's I think it's super cool you know everybody's got alcohol and water laying around so <laughs> we can make that real easy all right so this one here I'm gonna show you how to do it on this one hopefully I can remember how I've done this technique many times but you know I'm gonna put a bright color on here I don't know if that will work out so well I'm gonna go ahead and put the dark green that I put on here uh, as well so when I do this one let me just get a big old brush what I want to do is um, really thin this paint down to lots of water lots of water a little bit more water okay we'll see if this works this this may totally not work <laughs> I mean I, it's worked for me in the past that color is not even showing up let me let me just use this color that I used over here this lighter green Generally, I do a dark color on top of a light background. Okay, that needs way more water. Way more water. So generally, I do a light background, and then I do a dark wash on top of it. But I do want it to stay wet. This is pretty wet. Okay. All right, let's see if it works. <laughs> it's been a while since I've done this one, so I'm going to take my alcohol. You can do this with water too, but I'm gonna take my alcohol and start tapping it on here. And look at that. I think that's why I like to do the the light underneath and then the dark on top because it makes a more subtle, subtle technique background. So you can do that with the alcohol. Let's see if it will how it will do with water. Water doesn't do it as much, but it does create a little bit of um, I don't know I like to call them ghost ghost background ghost circles I don't know but you could do it both with water and alcohol you just get a different effect so this is something you can take some scrap with and play around and see if you want to try it but I do recommend your light color be underneath and your dark color be the one that you wash over it with and create your effect and and you can just keep adding and adding layers onto that you can put another wash of paint on there and just keep going with that so that is my fun little technique background for you a couple of tips there so if you've not ever seen that type of background I do have I think one of my short video shorts shows how to do this uh, and I've done it in a few projects so let me move that let me move these to get dry okay so that was just with rubbing alcohol and I keep rubbing alcohol at my paint table all the time I have a big bottle I fill up and then I have this little one that um, has one of those tops that you can pump so if I just want a little bit of alcohol to put on my project I can just use that and pump it up so a couple of tips there all right let me move this <coughs> and get my easel. <coughs> Goodness. Puffy and dry. 
That's me today. <sighs> oh, thank you, Linda. Thank you, Veronica. You've never seen that done with alcohol before. Yeah, it's, it's fun. I've, I've used that technique for years, but I don't use it on a lot of projects. All right, let me get my palette cam up here. And I don't have my palette set correctly. <laughs> I just, I wasn't prepared. And that's not the palette I want to use anyway, so let me get a different palette. All right, let's go to this palette. Man, that fell out of my chair. <laughs> Oh, Lord, help me today. I'm not with it. All right, palette. There we go. I don't want this one. Just toss that one aside. Okay. Duck. I'm here, you guys. I promise. I'm here. Not 100% mentally, but I'm here. Okay. All right, so um, let me get my paints out here. And I do feel like everything is so far away from me. Let me do some adjusting here. Okay. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. Foliage green. <laughs> this is what we're going to use here. Foliage green and some white. I won't need near that much paint, but I want to make sure you can see it. And I wish my palette looked white. Oh, I forgot to put my extra light out today. Well, I'm pretty light over here. But this is a white palette. I do not know why the color won't come true on that. Um, I'm going to grab a flat brush here. Actually, I'll grab a smaller one because I'm going to paint this, this area in first. So I've only applied one coat. I'm not going to paint the leaf or the stem in, but I do want to show you how to get your coats up to a nice... Um, get that moisture out of my brush to a nice smooth coat. So you can see in mine, I've got a little bit of streaking and stuff from my first coat, but when you put your second coat on, just a nice thin little coat, it's gonna smooth everything out so nicely. A little bit over here, I'm gonna use this ginormous brush in this little spot here. Try to anyway. Okay, that was just with the straight green. Sorry, I had all kinds of lines on my on my monitor. All right, so now I'm just going to equally mix white and green. And let me spritz my palette because I need some moisture so I can spread this paint around. up a little water and just a thin little layer on here oh man I should turn my fan on today it is incredibly hot it was like 68 degrees when I got up this morning so it's gonna be hot with those storms coming in it's just gonna be an awful night I probably won't get any sleep And your eggshell can, you can have your shape along here, along the edge, any shape that you want. I don't actually think that mine matches my line drawing because I don't, I'm not sure I drew it in the proper way. But, all right, quick second coat here. Grab some water. I'm going to mix a little more paint, more water. I just want to do this very quickly. Second coat should not take you very long. You're just smoothing out. Smoothing out all those edges or all those brush strokes. That's why we want to have thinner paint here. Okay, I'm gonna go to my smaller one, get that small area there. Right here. Oh. I thought I had water on that side of my brush, <laughs> but I didn't. I didn't. Alright, smooth that out. There we go. Okay. 
Um, the duck, now he is um, lemon yellow and snow white. So let me put some lemon yellow out. Where am I, Pam? I am in Springfield, Missouri. Um, so um, close to the edge of the path. Maybe it will kind of move down and not <laughs> be as bad as we think it's going to be. But the weather guy says it's going to be bad. I think Arkansas is going to get the worst of it again. So... I'm sure they're not looking forward to the storms tonight. They had some really bad ones the other day. This is spring in, in uh, Missouri, so. This is the kind of weather we have. Okay, this is just an equal mix, one to one. You can see how everything's getting all smoothed out now. So I just wanted you to see that. Sometimes you gotta do a third coat, especially if you're painting on a a darker background. Um, you can undercoat with a couple of coats of white, but you're still going to have to put a couple of coats of your base coat on here. And I've already got my three coats of white on my flower. I did three coats of white on it. That's looking good enough for us to start adding some color and detail on. So that smoothed our duck out a little bit better. He will get that bright yellow, I promise. He'll turn bright yellow. Okay, now on the beak, um, I think I'll use a, see if this round brush is big enough. Um, the beak was a mix of lemon yellow and cadmium orange. Just an equal mix there. That's just the this is these are all just the undercoats of everything. Base coats, whatever you want to call them. So we're gonna mix these two together. I think I need a bigger brush. This little brush is making me work too hard. So, you know, like I said, if you need to do a third coat, then that is what you should do. All right. So there is all of our coats on there. Oh, goodness. Got paint over here. I am. <laughs> this is not going to be the day for me to be painting, I'm telling you right now. Oh, my goodness. Not sure how I did that. I must have it on my hand. <laughs> okay. S should I start the day over? What what should I do here? Should I, should I just start it over? Boy, I really, really got that on there. <laughs> I should wipe right off. It's not it's not cured. Okay. All right. Let's let's add some dots onto our eggshell. We want to put little white dots, little green dots. We're going to come back and add the dark dots later. But we want to get those little dots on there first. And it's foliage green and white. So this is what color the foliage green is before we added white to this. So they'll show up very well on there. Uh, I love to watch you paint. I think I've watched all your videos. I really like the Christmas ones with pine and holly. Yeah, those, those are some of my favorite things to paint. Um, I feel like everybody does them, so I, I probably don't do them as often as I used to. But thank you very much, Don. And thank you for sharing my video link today. I saw that you sh shared that on Facebook, so thank you for doing that. All right, here we go. Just little little dots and dabs, and and uh, who cares where you put them? Just put them on there. And, uh, and you know, I'm just using the tip of this brush. I'm not giving any pressure. So just wherever you want to put them. Put a few more. Give it a little bit more character in there. All right, let's go down to this one down here, and we're gonna put a. Little, now we're gonna be washing some color over this, so these these dots will all kind of push back in there a little bit. Take some of the paint out of those. Those were very thick with paint. I've just got a two round brush here, and I just am using the tip very lightly. 
fresh paint will always work best for this. A little bit too much paint there. So again, just continue randomly. I usually do this pretty quickly so I don't think too much about it. And wherever they go, that's where they go, okay? I am a firm believer. I had a very great artist uh, who has passed away um, tell me that she was taught by a master artist that said, wherever you put the paint on your surface, that's where it's meant to go. So you just, you know, work with that and go with it. So don't ever feel like you're, you're doing something wrong. Just wherever, wherever you're putting it, that's where it's meant to be. You know, unless you drop your paintbrush <laughs> on your piece, which I've done many times. And I hope you all will stay at the end. I'm going to go over some things that are happening within the next, like, month. I'm not going to put a lot over here because we're going to shade over there. But this side will have a little bit more. Okay, I'm going to go down here. And do something here. Thank you so much. I think he's a, he's a cute little one. Um, so yeah, I'll be showing you what we're doing next week and some things that are upcoming. I'm gonna touch some of those back with my finger. Those are getting kind of bold in there. This is also how you can take them down, plus you get paint on your finger and then you can transfer that paint in other places and it creates a whole nother design, which I think is just so cool. Okay, I think we're pretty good there. That's plenty of speckling. You can do as little or as much speckling as you want on yours. Okay, I'm going to let those dry a little bit before we start shading on that. So I'm going to go ahead and paint the eyes in with soft black. Don't need a lot of paint for this. My water. Bonnie, hello from Oklahoma City. Looking forward to seeing you in August. Awesome. Are you taking one of my classes, Bonnie? That is wonderful. I'm looking forward to it. I've been doing some prep on those surfaces for class. So I hope I see you in one of them. Now, the eyes, to me, the best way I can describe what I'm painting is I'm making a sunflower seed. <laughs> Not a sunflower seed, a watermelon seed. Watermelon seed shape here and a very small watermelon seed shape here because the head is kind of tilted here so we've just got a couple of I think this one just a little bit bigger a couple of little watermelon seeds here for the eyes easy peasy all right my dots should be dry so we're going to start shading on Where's my, my big angle brush here? All right, let's get some bright green out. Okay, that needs shook up. This is foliage green, and we're also going to put out evergreen. Hi, Charlene. A little late, that's okay. It'll be here. You can go back and catch what you missed. It, it wasn't much. <laughs> Me losing my mind. That's what you lost. All right, so foliage green and evergreen. Evergreen is really thick. All right, so I'm going to start with my evergreen. This is going to be incredibly bright when we put it on here, so I'm really going to work this in with some water. So it will be kind of soft. We are going to wash this color over it later, but... Um, yeah, it's a, it's, it's a bright color. Uh, Louise, you can find the pattern at lanalam.com if you uh, go to my shop tab or even on the home page, there should be a, a section that says line drawings. It should be under that one or YouTube uh, lessons. Anything that I have a live lesson for will be under YouTube lessons. 
Okay, so that was just a um, washi float that washi floats are very easy to walk over because <laughs> they have a lot of water in them. So that was just a washi float of that folded green, no, leaf green, and it's super bright. This is my favorite color in the deco art line, so I hope they never discontinue it. I, I love it, uh, it, especially for Christmas designs, because it has a little bit of a blue tint to it, and I like that about it, and I think that's what makes it go so well for Christmas designs, it, that little bit of blue that is in it, okay? So again, another washy little float. So before it dries, it's starting to dry there a little bit, I'm going to very gently mop that and that's just gonna soften that in there. It will remove a little bit. So if you've got a lot of moisture there, give it you know a few seconds to start drying a little bit and then go in and mop it because if you mop right into that very, very wet, you're just taking it right off of there and you'll be a sad person. Okay. Um, I want that to dry a little bit, so we're going to shade in the um, area below here with that dark evergreen there. Make sure you make your little um, cracks nice, nice points. Just gonna shade all in there. I'm gonna mop that because that's pretty ch chop chop choppy. You know that bright green up on that shell, like whoo, that's that's kind of all you can see. But we're gonna tone that down. It'll all be good. But I say that, but the way my day's been going, who knows? <laughs> it could be a disaster. Okay, I want that to dry a little bit more, so I think I'll move to the beak and shade it with cad orange. I'm not sure that cad orange is going to show up. I might have to add um, a little bit of soft black in it. Let's see if it's going to show up. I think it showed up pretty good. Well, for me, I don't know. Is it? Yep, it's showing up there for you guys. We're going to put that cat orange there. We will darken that with, we'll add a little soft black to the mix. Okay, we don't have to do much to the eyes there. So, let me grab my heat tool. Maybe it's all tangled up. <laughs> oh, Lord, help me today. I feel like I have enough stuff around me for 15 projects. This is ridiculous. Okay. All right, let's deepen the shading because that's going to help that look much better. So we're going to mix evergreen and foliage green together. Let's see if I give a ratio. Oh, no, so it must be an equal mix. We'll see. I think I'll probably add more evergreen in there. Too much paint on my brush. And I'm going to say two to one on the, the mix there. I need water because that's way too thick on my brush. I want it to be thinner. Need more water. There we go. Paint wasn't moving. So we're going to darken this. I think I need a little more evergreen in there. Let's be just a slightly bit darker there. Okay, we'll go over. If you end up covering up all of your um, brighter green that we put underneath, don't worry about it. We will wash, be washing over that. See, that's still too bright for me, so I will... Um, I'm going to add more evergreen to my mix here. So maybe a 3 to 1 ratio. 3 evergreen, 1 leaf green. 
probably feel like my brush is incredibly dry. Need to get a different brush maybe, because this one's not, not wanting to paint for me like I would like it to paint for me. It just keeps a dragon. Now, your mop brush, I don't know how many of you are aware, but you need to use it dry and then clean it off on a wet spot and then dry it off on a dry spot to remove the paint. Because if you don't remove the paint out of it before you use it the next time, when you go to use it, the moisture that you're mopping is going to reactivate the paint that's in the brush. And then if it's a color you're not currently using, you're going to place that color on your project. Put a little bit of this darker color here. All right, that that is not dark enough for me, so <laughs> I will have to come back to that. So in the meantime, I'm going to do my second float here, and maybe this will finish out the shading on this area. I think I had to come back and add a little bit of soft black to get it really dark underneath that shell. Alright, any questions anybody? This will be a little bit longer project today because it's more involved with all the areas. See how I got a line right there almost where I stopped my paint? Don't like that. But when we wash over, it will it will take care of that. Okay, I'm going to go back to my beak. And I want to highlight on the uh, beak. If I find my instructions, make sure. Oh, I need some sunset gold out. Very bright yellow. knocking stuff over everywhere. <laughs> We're going to give a little lightness on the beak, a, a kind of a yellowy orange right there on the beak. Okay, I'm going to darken at the back of it with a mix of uh, my cat orange and my soft black. Just dirtying up that orange. paint on my brush. Still don't have enough paint on my brush. <laughs> need a little bit more of that darker color. Okay. That's starting to look pretty good. Alright, I really want to finish the shell and get it done and move on. So I'm going to do a wash of evergreen on the shaded side. Got plenty of water in my brush, really working it in. And then we'll put this on here. On that, just mostly on that edge. Still looks very bright to me, at least in my camera shot it looks very bright to me. I think I'm just going to switch brushes because that one does not want to load paint for me. So, let's see if I got another angle brush that will not be so dry. That one seemed like it was a new brush, so I did not expect it to be so dry like that. doesn't feel a whole lot better. Maybe it's just my painting today. Alright, gently, gently mop that. Alright, I'm going to take my uh, bright green and make a very sheer wash of it. It's going to be mostly water. Just tinting my water here. That's all I'm doing. And I'm just going to messily take a little bit of that on my brush, put this in here and bring a little bit of that green 
over into the shell a little bit more. Instead of having it that muted um, color, mix a little more here. Mostly water, just a little bit of paint. I had way too much in my brush, so I just wiped my brush out. Went right here where I had all this and just kind of worked it in. Still need a little bit right here. Mop that, smooth it out very lightly because that was super wet. And that up there looks much better. My evergreen should be a little smoother than that. I'm still, I, I am absolutely not liking <laughs> my evergreen, so I may come back and do it again. All right, so I want to put some little dabs of evergreen on here. And touch my finger and soften them out. needs a few in here can bring some over to the lighter side that's okay just touch them with your finger so they're not bold and incredibly bright so I'm gonna go down below and do the same thing dab them with your finger keep them soft bold ones down here. Okay, that's not too shabby there. I feel like I'm going to have a million brushes out here. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and highlight on the other side. And we're just going to do that with some white. It'll have to be done a couple of times at least because, you know, white kind of goes down into the paint. It just fades down in there. It just it just does. <laughs> it just just one of those colors. All right, do this edge and then I'm gonna do the cracked edges. I need to erase my graphite lines as well on here. Probably ought to shade underneath that leaf. I didn't shade underneath it in my original one but um, probably would look better if it was had a little tiny flow to something under it. There we go. Just a little tiny something. Okay, where was I? Highlighting. Okay, highlighting. I'm going to highlight the cracked edges with my white. I'm going to start right about here. That side's a little shadowed over there, so I don't want to go all the way down. Kind of walk it up into the shell a little bit. Again, something that will have to be done a couple of times. And then the lower one will get its... Let's see, I've got... Well, I can't tell where my... Where my cracks are, I'm, I'm just going to have to make some new cracks here. Because I can't tell what's what. I'll try and go from my... From my um, piece I have painted sitting in front of me. Maybe that will help. <laughs> but your cracks can seriously be whatever shape you want them to be. We do want them to have some nice points on them, though. Okay, I probably won't do the second uh, highlight on the cracks until after we get some shading on our duck. That's far enough on that side, I think. Okay, I will go up here and do a second highlight up here on this edge because we'll just come back and 
we have to add more, we can later. But the second highlight should finish it. And a little bit down here. So again, I'm not going to do the second highlight on the edge till we do our duck. So the duck, um, I'm going to put a quick little wash of lemon yellow on the duck to start getting him a brighter color. And I may do this a couple of times on here. Even bright because we're going to start adding that golden yellow here in a minute. We're going to add just a few little detail lines on this duck. Okay, I'm just doing I'm just doing a wash, but I will probably do it a couple times. Well, that's making him look so much cuter. My gosh, so much cuter. Okay, I'm going to finish out the shading here. We'll be done with the inside. That is evergreen and a little bit of soft black. And I want to go right up next to the crack here. That's one of them V areas. All of these are V areas, actually. So, you know, they're they're your darkest areas whenever you're painting and you're doing shadows. Those are going to be your dark areas. A little bit under here. I'm just using a quarter inch angle for this. I don't even know if I listed that one on the the list, but it should be on there. I'm going to see if I can smooth out that evergreen here. I'm just, I'm not happy with it. It's going to give my lemon a little bit time to dry. I just need more darker color over here. I don't think I added soft black to it, but I feel like I need to add soft black to it because it's not... Oh, that does look better with that soft black in there. I'm pretty sure that's not in my instruction. Oh, yep, yeah, it is in my instruction to add a little bit of soft black to it. That's why it wasn't looking right. I'm like, that doesn't look like my original one. What is wrong with it? A little bit of soft black in there. For that shadowed edge. Okay. That's better. I want my duck to get dry. I'm going to put a little bit more of this bright green up here. There we go. I'm happy now. It's looking good. Barely dab that to take a little bit of that water out of there, but I don't want to take too much out because I want my color to stay in there. Hi, Kathy. All right, get that dry. I'm going to put a second wash on my duck. Get that smaller brush. And then we're going to start adding details to this guy he dries we'll finish out our highlight well no I won't finish out the highlight there I might finish out the beak because the beak won't take a whole lot and then we can add details onto the duck okay he looks good okay finish out the beak I'm gonna take my little round brush I'm gonna make a little wash of my soft black I'm just going to dab this at the back of the nose, just kind of speckly. Maybe softly touch it with my finger. Okay, just a little bit back in there. 
I'm going to get a little soft black and we'll do a couple little nostrils on here. Let's highlight on the beak. I'm going to first use the white and the bright yellow. Mix them together. And we're going to highlight on the tip of the beak. I'm doing it kind of choppily so it's not a smooth little float on there. You can see how choppy it is. And I'm going to come up, just tap it up the center of the, the beak. Okay, we'll come back and brighten that with some white here in a minute. I'll put a little highlight on the nostrils. Teeny tiny little highlight. Okay, I'm going to dry that. We'll just get the beak done. The shell is done except for the last highlight on the crack part. And then for the last highlight on the beak, it's just white. Just kind of choppy, choppy, close to that edge. And then a little bit of the center there. Okay, super easy. Easy peasy peasy. Oh, so cute. So cute. All right, let's start adding some detail on our duck. So I'm going to use a, a detail brush here. And we're going to put some barely subtle little hair things in here. We're going to use white. Uh, then we may use some of this darker orange. I think I did use some of the darker orange. I did not use the lemon yellow, I don't think, because that's what we washed the duck in with. So we're just going to make a few. I'm going to thin my white down with some water. I had lots of water in my brush, so remove the excess off of my brush. Make sure my ferrule is not wet. Touch my paper towel and I'm just going to pull some little hair things in here. I don't know, fur things, whatever they are. I, I don't know anything about painting animals, so you guys, if you know how to do it, <laughs> then you do it your way. Okay, I'm going to bring these down to the beak a little bit and this is just loose and put some in here and I'm just going to, I'm just kind of going to tap some, uh, white here and there and create some highlights and you know we'll come back and, and brighten on the edges but this is going to create highlight on the duck itself so this little chick just cracks you up <laughs> well i'm just happy that he looks like a chick so ecstatic all right, some little highlight over here. Some lightness kind of around the eye a little bit. I'm just dabbing that in there. A little bit up here. I'm, just, I'm looking at the one I painted because to be honest with you, I don't remember how I painted this. So I'm just going off of what I see on the one that I painted. Uh, I did write myself a few little brief notes. He looks, he looks pretty bad right now. I'm telling you, he's he's an ugly duck. But we'll get him there. Fingers crossed. A little bit more water. So I'll just put a few in here. I mean, we're not going to end up seeing much of that when we're done. It's just going to be a little highlight in there. We can come back and add some more if we need to. I'm going to move on to that darker yellow and thin some of that down. Our golden yellow. What is it? Golden sunset, sunset, sunset gold. And we'll put some of these in here. Not too many. We're going to shade with this color, but we do want to have a few in here. see I here dabbed a little bit back here I don't know kind of looks like it a little bit 
here. And just a few little, I'm not sure how well those are showing up for you guys, but they're in here. Alright, then over here I did some more water. Those were pretty thick lines there. But I'm going to leave them. Not taking them off. Just going to do a little bit down the body. We're going to, not going to end up seeing a lot of this, so I don't I don't want you to um, stress out too much about you know all these little lines because they're going to push back. Let me get a second layer in the eyes here. Them nice and dark. And then I'm going to take this soft black and I'm going to get some water in my brush and thin it down, make a kind of a washy soft black. Touch my paper towel and we're going to dab this in here going up to the eye, a little bit above the beak, going over to this eye a little bit. This is very, very washy very washy. A little bit over this eye. Around this edge of the beak. I'm going to wipe a little bit of that off. I feel like I got way too much on my brush. This is just a little bit of shadowing. I'll come back and maybe mix a little gold in with that. That gold color. ugly little duckling, isn't he? Okay, let me go to my 3 8 inch angle and we'll start shading on this guy. So we're going to use this Sunset Gold. This is a bright, bright color. Go around all your little points. Oh, that's helping so much already. Look at that. So cute. Go around this flower. That's our highlight side, so I don't want to get too much in there. This is going to have a lot of this color over here. You can go to your smaller angle brush if you need to. It's going to be this color down in there. That's why I didn't want to paint. finish painting my final highlight on those points because some of these areas are a little tight. Oh, he's coming together so cute. Just, well, I've totally ruined that point there so <laughs> I'm just going to reshape it. That's our first little float of color there. Um, I'm going to go a little bit around the beak. On top of where I put the um, soft black, this is going to blend into that soft black a little bit. Maybe a little bit over here. He's looking cuter, isn't he? So much cuter. Okay, I'm going to dry that real quick because we want to do it again. This time I'm going to add just the tiniest amount of soft black in there. Okay? Um, 
you don't want to get too much because it could make your yellow turn green or some other odd color <laughs> but we do want to see a little bit of darkness in here dark. That's better. All right, so this this mix is going to go in your your shadow areas, okay? So this area down here is darker. Maybe a little bit along that flower. It's going to keep that flower tucked in. And then all of our little V areas inside our shell. Let me mix a little bit more. Down through here, it's going to be darker. This is a little V area back here, so I want to make sure it gets a little bit more darkness in it. A little bit around the head there. Try not to let too much of this get out, you know, where I don't want it. Um, well, he is looking super cute. Okay, let's add a highlight on him. We'll finish our eyes and our shell, and we can move on to our flower. A little bit of a highlight here with some white. Wipe some of that paint off my brush. I had a ton. A little bit there. And I did a little bit here. So I've got a few highlight areas and we can repeat that. I'll let it dry. Now I'm going to finish up the eye before I move on to doing the highlight on the shell. So with the eye I want to put a little white line down here, and then a couple of dots, and we'll do a little white line under this one, okay, didn't want it to come quite that far forward, and then we'll put a couple of dots in this eye. Okay. A little bit more white along there. All right, let's finish our highlights on the duck and the shell. And we'll just do all those at the same time with our white. So I'm going to come up here and do just kind of, I'm not going up and down, up and down. I'm just randomly hitting a place here and there. Okay along this edge, just a little. I do want to make sure I've got my points good though. Okay, then we'll re-highlight on the duck. Get him a little brighter. Oh, he's looking so cute, you guys. Oh, let me put a quick little extra highlight down here. Shape that edge of that shell a little bit. It's kind of wonky. Okay. Um, I don't really think that finishes up the duck. Touch up here in the eye where I got some white. Um, I got to do a little highlight up here, and I did that with the foliage green. So I just did a little, like, sketchy, sketchy line. I might have to add some white to mine. Something I'm not seeing it as well as I am on the. I think I brought my shading down a little bit more. Just on that edge a little bit. Away from the edge. I didn't do it on the very, very edge of it. So he looks super cute. 
I love this little guy. Okay, let's work on our flower. So we need a new color out for that. Oh, I also wanted to show you something real quick. Um, you know, I use the Posca pens. Well, I ordered some new ones, and these are like ultra fine. They're finer than the ones I used last time. So like the dots on the nose or the dots in the eyes, the outlining the eye, you know, if you have a little trouble doing that with a brush, you can get one of these. I got them on Amazon. I think they were th there was three of them. I can't remember how much they were, to be honest with you. I don't remember. But um, if you type in Posca pens on Amazon, they um, bring up all different kinds and colors and I usually only look for the black and white ones but okay our new color out is what color is it strawberry love this color all right let's go ahead and paint our leaf and our stem in and that's with the leaf green so it can be drying and we can shade on it I didn't draw my stem in just going to paint it in. This is kind of a turned leaf. And then the stem comes from here. And then I have it coming down over here. Like it like it's in his beak or it could be just tucked in, you know, underneath his beak. <laughs> Whichever way it, you wanted to imagine it. Oh, I forgot to put the crack in the shell. So I don't, I don't know if that's on the line drawing or not, but I did do a little crack in it um, with just the evergreen. So let me do that. Don't think that's going to be good enough. So I just came up from this little point right here and just went up and then over and then up and, you know, however you want it to look. That doesn't look anything. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't look anything like the one I painted, so <laughs> let me try that again. Oh, good Lord Almighty. Up and then over and then up and over and up. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> All right. There's your little crack in your eggshell. You can put one in the bottom one, too, if you want to, but I did not. All right. So our flower here. Um, I'm going to try my 3 8 inch angle. We're just going to wash... I mean, this is a transparent color. It's so, so pretty. I love this color. Strawberry. And we're just going to do our tulip petals. I don't want it to fill my petal. I might have to go to my quarter inch angle, maybe. Right now, we're just doing, separating our leaves our petals, I guess, not our leaves, with this color. Trying to establish where everything is. I think I'll go to my quarter inch when I get done here, because this is really filling things up. It keep on, keeps wanting to separate. Okay. Oh, it's so pretty even with just that one little coat on there, but it definitely needs more. So we're going to definitely do more. Dry that. I'm going to get a second quick coat on my leaf. Well, hi, Cindy. Thank you, Darlene. Hi, Sue. Glad you could be here. All right, so I'm going to get a second quick coat on the leaf and the stem. I do want my stem to connect here. Right up to that flower. Okay, moving to my quarter inch angle. Maybe I'll have a little more control with this one. I'm gonna put a second float on here. Okay, that's a lot of paint. my shape the best there. And we'll do this outside edge here. Definitely need some water. There, we're just 
going back over the places that we did just a little bit ago. I feel like I have enough moisture in this little bitty brush. That's been my problem all day. I don't feel like I've had enough moisture. And I've been puffy and feeling all dried out. Of course, that could just be because I'm old. All dried out. Let me spritz my palette. Oh, so cute. All right. I'm going to highlight the first highlight. Um, and then I'm going to put my stamens in. We're going to use just white. This is just going to clean up stuff, and I want to do my second one after um, my stamens are all in, because I'm sure I will get paint where I don't want it to be. Just highlighting the tips. I know they already have three coats of white on them, but them to be bright. Okay, I'm going to take my detail liner and thin some of that white down. And we're going to put a few little lines in here. Just, we don't have to do them everywhere. Just these, mostly these front forward leaves is all we'll see it on. Petals, I keep calling them leaves, but they're petals. Um, that's pretty much all we'll see them on. Um, I want to add my stamens in now. Um, I think, I don't know if I said flower. Evergreen. I did a mix of evergreen and leaf green. So, you're just making some little bitty lines coming out of here, different heights. It's not, it's not a whole lot, so <laughs> don't get carried away. Okay, I'm not going to dot those with their white until uh, those until we get done. Uh, we have a final shading and a final highlight, so I'm not going to dot those till we're done. So we can go to the leaf and stem. I'm going to use my evergreen and shade my leaf. I have to add some soft black to that because that's not going to show up. Okay, <laughs> not that much soft black. Goodness gracious. Way too much paint in my brush here. Okay. So right in here, and this leaf kind of turns a little bit, so we can go right up to this edge, and then we'll put some down here. That's going to be the highlight edge out there. Okay, and if you want it, put a little bit of this on your um, stem. You can. Uh, I don't know how much of that's going to show up, but you can put it on there. Okay, let's do a highlight on there. And let's see. Lemon yellow and leaf green. Let me see how that mixes together. It might not make a bright enough green. I might go to that other orange. Way too much water here. I want to really. That is like I'm. I'm just like soaking in water. That must be. That must be where I sprayed my water on my palette. I'm like, why am I so? Why is it so wet? <laughs> can't see my water on my palette so it's I want a really bright green here there we go. that's a little brighter maybe a little bit more of that yellow in there just mix it till you get a green that's pretty bright oh my gosh and we're gonna put this on 
the outside. I'm really trying not to fill this entire leaf with that highlight color, but boy, I just about filled it completely up. <laughs> okay. Oh, goodness gracious. Um, let me try a little bit of that. Those two yellows. I can get it just a touch brighter. Just a touch brighter on there. Okay. Let's finish up our flower. We're almost done with this. We gotta finish our flower and then shade underneath it. He is so cute. Okay, so we're gonna take our strawberry. Try and find a place on my palette. Make sure you can see it. <laughs> and I'm gonna add a little soft black to that and darken that strawberry color. This really makes a beautiful shading color for our strawberry. And we're gonna go along the bottom here makes it almost a deep purple color. Soft black has a little bit of brown in it. Maybe a tiny bit more of that soft black. Get into these deeper areas. Okay, that was a lot. I'm not sure what's going on with this little brush. I'm not sure what's going on with any of my brushes today. I have not been able to paint well all day. Well, I've only painted for you guys, so <laughs> I've not painted well for you guys all day. A little bit through here, we want to push those stamens down in there. I'm trying not to let this get incredibly wide and fill up areas. I'm just trying to get those dark, dark areas. Okay, and that's much darker than on the, uh... okay. To mix me a little bit more because I have to do a little bit more down here to make it match. Make it match. Okay. If that's too dark for you, don't add the soft black in there because um, you know it can get it can get really dark very quickly. So one more highlight on here. So it'll help us clean up our edges as well. So any place where we kind of got a little wonky, I need a little bit of that strawberry color right here. Okay, let's highlight our stamens. First I gotta fix something. I don't want to see any light color behind that on our duck. I still kind of see it. But... All right, my stamens. I just did white. Just some little teeny tiny little, okay, or great big dots of white. I got enough white on that drop right there. I can just pick it up from it and <laughs> then add it wherever I need it. All right, so now we just got a shade underneath him, and he will be done. And I did soft black underneath him. And my shading is not going to be as big as on my original because I brought him too far down from the top. On my original one, this is just a 6x6 six six piece. He's pretty close to the top edge up there. So, of course, you guys have seen me do shading under a lot of stuff. I still need to erase my graphite lines, too. So, shadow is more on the left side, which is generally how I shade. I generally always shade where the shadow is more to the left side. And I'm choppy, choppy, choppy. Get right up to that shell. I'm going to dry that and then just get it darker just right up underneath that, the shell. Okay. Not what I wanted to do. I did not want to get on my shell. I definitely can go to a much smaller brush here. I do not have as big an area to do on this one as I did. Okay, I think that is going to finish this cute little guy out, who is a mess. Alright, let me move some stuff, bring my original in, turn 
Turn off my palette cam. Oh my gosh, you're so cute. So cute. Wide angle out. Well, that didn't take as long as I thought it was going to take. So cute. Turn my palette cam off. Palette. There you are. All right, what do you guys think? So cute. He turned out cute considering I don't know what I'm doing when I'm painting animals. I think he turned out cute. You know, you just got to play around and, and uh, work it out the best you can. Let's zoom in on him. He is cute. Do I have any questions on this guy before I bring in what we're doing next week and show you some other things? Oh, you can't wait to do that one. That's awesome. That's awesome. I can't I can't wait to see your pictures. <laughs> so be sure and post them and tag me. Um, if I'm not a friend on Facebook, then be sure and request that. Thank you, Rosanna. Thank you, Jan and Linda and Belinda. I think he turned out super cute. So he was a lot of fun. He'll be... Uh, Oh, my cookies are on the other side. I got I got some yellow on there. I'll have to clean that off now. I haven't varnished this side yet, so I can clean that up. But this will be a, a piece that's either for sale or that I do inside a box of stuff. I'm thinking about doing um, boxes of random things like a mystery box. And it will have all sorts of things in it. And I will probably throw in some painted pieces, you know. I'm thinking about doing that, so give me your thoughts on that. Uh, do I have a video on varnishing? Um, I don't, hmm. I'm trying to think. I don't have one specifically on varnishing. So do you have a question? Maybe I can answer for you. Now, I never varnish with a brush unless I am varnishing a very small piece, okay? Um, I always varnish with an artist sponge. I don't have one here in front of me. A damp artist sponge. Um, you don't want it really wet, just like you don't want your paint roller wet. Again, you only want it damp so it releases whatever medium you're putting in it. It don't keep it. It doesn't suck it up in there and hold on to it. But I always, always, always varnish with a sponge. Um, I have occasionally varnished with the roller, but even when I'm doing a large piece, I still get the biggest sponge that I can find, and you can just go to Walmart and get a big sponge, a car sponge, whatever kind of sponge, and I will use that to varnish with. When I'm doing a large piece, I will pour my varnish right on top of it, and then take my damp sponge and smooth it out and spread it out and make sure... Um, I've got a nice thin coat. That's a good thing about varnishing with a sponge. You get thin layers of varnish. You don't get thick build up layers of varnish. And I always use, I didn't used to, I used to always use a satin, but now I try to use a matte or a flat varnish. So it looks like I just painted it. There, you know, not a lot of glare on it. So um, this one's already varnished. So you can, you can see it has no shine to it whatsoever. But um, if you have a specific question about varnishing, I'm happy to answer it. Um, uh, thank you, Don. Um, you're going to get the line drawing for this and your pumpkin and apple with a candle. Okay, cool. I can't wait to see your work on both of those. All right, I'm going to wide angle out here. Uh, I'm going to bring in what we're going to do next week if there's no more questions on this guy cute little duck and you get the bunny line drawing with him so you know I can't wait to see how you paint a bunny <laughs> I didn't do very well so I mean I don't I don't think my bunny I mean he is kind of cute but I can see all the errors in my bunny so um, he's kind of cute <laughs> but anyway all right, this is what we're doing next week. We're doing glass painting. This is going to be so much fun, but I'm not using glass paint. I'm using multi-surface paint, which can be used on a multitude of surfaces. I love this paint because you can use it on fabric, glass, wood, uh, your stepping stones, whatever. You know, you can just use it in so many ways. So I'm going to show you how I do these little guys right here. This will be next week. 
Um, I'm really looking forward to this. I haven't painted on glass for a while. I used to paint on glass quite a bit, but I haven't done it for a while and I wanted some little wine glasses for my home. And as I was painting them, I thought, oh, this might make a fun little lesson to do for you guys. Um, so I am going to uh, paint these up next week. I've got um, some prepped and ready to go. And we'll be painting those next week. Now, let's, I'm going to show you what's coming up in the next, not after next week, what's going to come up in the one, two, three, four, four weeks after that, because they're all going to be videos. Uh, because I'm going to be either getting ready to go on vacation or on vacation or coming back and, you know, um, working on stuff from vacation. <laughs> so it's it, the next four after the glasses are all going to be videos. But I will be in a place where I can be online with you guys and answer any questions and your comments and, uh, you know, talk with you as the video is going. Okay, so the first one after the glasses is going to be this silhouette one. And um, it is not a long video. It's only 35, 36 minutes long. So, but it, it was fun. It, it was a lot of fun. I did this little boy. So I did put on, on my website today the, the line drawing with this. You get the lady and the boy. Picture of both. Um, what I, um, the paints I used and, you know, everything else The you know, and, uh, the prep instructions which are very very simple so this is going to be um, the week of April 18th I'm going to be posting that on YouTube today I hope I'll get that up there today and get it uh, as set as a premiere um, this particular and I do explain this all at the beginning of the video but this particular one will be a one where I do not talk in it because when I was recording this I didn't know if I would like it. I didn't know if it would turn out. I, I was so unsure of it. So um, I just recorded it without talking and I didn't want to do a voiceover because that's so difficult to do. Um, so I just set it to, to some nice music. Um, it's not a long video. <laughs> like I said, it's only 35 minutes and the first couple of minutes is me talking. So um, it, it, it only took me about 30 minutes to paint this up. So um, this was so much fun and I think this type of silhouette is so dramatic so impactful and I love it and you can do it with any shape or person or object or anything so it was it was fun and you can watch me as I paint it and um, you know paint one of your own but the line drawing will be on my channel okay then the week after that will be this lovely little uh, project that I painted up a while back maybe a couple of months ago a month ago I don't know I think I painted it in February actually um, so I finally got the video edited for it it will be up there and uh, you can watch this and again I will be with you guys <laughs> wherever I'm at I'm gonna I have my alarm on my phone set so that I can be there and watch the video with you and answer any questions so Don, you would love a piece of my artwork, yeah. I, I seriously am thinking about doing, uh, you know, just some random mystery boxes, and it will be just one price for the box, and I will have an assortment of things. I have surfaces left over from my husband used to make my surfaces, and I didn't sell them all. I have packets. I have tools. I have painted pieces that I need to get rid of, you know. And I, I am seriously thinking about doing just just that so maybe in my next coffee and chat I'll have that kind of pegged out a little bit okay all right so then the week after that this one will be the first Tuesday in May this guy is coming out I could not <laughs> guys I could not find the piece I painted it on in the video this was just my um, journal page that I practiced it on I couldn't find the video the piece that I painted on the video I painted it on a big round tray from Hobby Lobby, <laughs> a metal tray that had a wood insert. I bought that tray last year sometime and finally thought, I gotta get something painted on that. So I painted this on it. I have no idea where I put it. It was such a large piece for me to store in here. And I did have it in here for a while, but I kept moving it around. I'm like, okay, I gotta put this somewhere. I've hunted <laughs> everywhere. I don't know where I put it. So in the video, I will be painting on that, not on this. but. It will be there. I think this will be a fun one 
uh, to see. And then on May 9th, this will come out. And I will be back after that. I already have two projects that I'm hoping to get finished so that when I come back and start my lives back up, we'll have two projects to start in for our live. So this will be May 9th. The packet is on my website already. So um, you can grab this little guy and uh, get ready to paint him. But that is what's coming up for the next month while I will be gone almost three weeks. So I wanted to make sure that you guys had um, designs and paintings that you could watch and do if you wanted while I was gone. So I didn't want to leave you hanging. Um, so that is what is going on. So, <laughs> oh, I still have this massive headache, you guys. I, I, can't, I can't hardly... I feel cross-eyed, so I'm surprised that painting even turned out today. Yeah, this, this little guy. I'm just so surprised he even turned out. So that is it for me. Oh, thank you, Jan. I'm a very versatile de designer. Well, thank you. I, I, I never wanted to be the kind of artist that stuck to one style of painting because I, I want to learn so many different things and uh, I teach my things most of the things that I paint um, I do watch a few people on video um, the frugal crafter is one of my favorite uh, artists that I love to watch her um, so if you've never been to her uh, YouTube channel you might want to check her out she is just a joy to watch she has a wealth of information of course she does work mostly in watercolors and pencils and uh, stuff like that and I I don't but <laughs> I still learn a lot from her I'd like to learn to do watercolor sometime I just got to sit down and you know give it a shot uh, but I don't I never wanted to be the kind of artist that just painted one certain style um, I want to paint them all <laughs> I just want to paint them all so um, yeah and there'll be lots of things that I that I do that don't appeal to other people but um, they appeal to me because they're fun and you know I learned something new with them so that's just the kind of artist I want to be so thank you Jan all right any more questions from you guys it is going to be raining here in a couple hours and then it's going to be storming all night not looking forward to it but uh, I think I need to go take something for my headache because it's it's not going away and then I need to go vote so <laughs> That is going to be it for me on this one, you guys. I have enjoyed having you. If you have not subscribed to my YouTube channel, I sure hope you'll subscribe. And please give me a thumbs up if you have enjoyed this lesson at all. <laughs> I appreciate you all, and I will see you guys next week for the glass painting. So have a wonderful and blessed remainder of your day. If you are in the path of any of these storms that are coming, I pray that you are safe. And uh, I'll see you guys next week. Have a wonderful, wonderful, uh, wonderful... Uh,